Hello, hello, this is Rose RCG Creations. How you doing? We are making homemade chicken broth. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, the camera boo. Sorry, there we go. There's our chickens. I don't have any, can't believe this, of um, onion. And I only have crushed red peppers. And I love to add this poultry seasoning. I love this. I forget what store I bought it. It was either Kroger, Kroger HEV, or Walmart. I forget which. It might be Futel. I don't have any, no celery whatsoever. Went to three stores. None of them had it. And so I'm just going to use celery seed place for the celery. But it definitely tastes better with fresh celery. Got my bay leaves. And I like to use this mix of peppercorns. I've got two whole chickens in my roaster pan. Now I'm gonna go. That has to go in another room. So let me bring you back when I add my water and get it plugged in and get ready to roll. But basically, all you do is put all this together. You can put this on the oven or in a crock pot, whichever. It actually, works better. It simmers better on the oven, but it's up to you. You use what you have. You want to get this to a boil. Once it goes to a boil, turn it down to as low as your whatever it is that you're using goes and simmer for a good six to eight hours and the more as much I'm doing two whole chickens they're small chickens as you can see they're not really big see my hand they're not really huge chickens but it's gonna be enough because I have no chicken broth whatsoever we have veggie broth and we got beef broth but uh, that'll be another video okay so let me bring it back to the next phase I'll bring it back okay we're well, back I got my water in Gonna put my lid on. I've already got it on 400. It could go all the way to 450, but I'm just gonna do it at 400. I'm gonna put my lid on. If you have a roaster that lets you have an opening, close it. I'm gonna set my timer for 35 minutes to see how much if it's a rapid boil. And then if it's at once it comes to a rapid boil, then you want to that's when you turn down the heat. Open up your vent. This already has these two little vent things, so there's nothing I can do with that. But some of the new roasters, the new one that I want to get, I want to be able to adjust it so I can turn it off and on as I want. But you know what? You may do with what you have. Don't sweat it. Okay, so we'll bring you back at that next phase. Okay, now we're back. Now it's time. It's like 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's time... Okay, yeah, it's cooled off. So I make sure it's cooled off because you're going to be able to you're going to work with your hands. You put the chicken with all the veggies in the container. Try to drain as much liquid. Ooh, it's kind of warm down there, but it's still manageable. You want a container that's going to be able to hold the liquid because there's going to be some liquid coming out. And I just want to scoop. All your veggies. A slotted, oops, let me turn this around so I can see. Sorry about that. Something slotted to collect. All the juice. This bowl is where I'm going to be putting the juice in that I'm going to stick in the fridge. I'm going to come back tonight after work. It'll All the fat will be on top and I'll scoop that out, be able to throw that away. Or some people save their fat. I don't. I don't use or cook with that. But some do. And this is the best time to be wearing an apron. Because this part will get messy. It just it just happens. Even though you try to be clean and nice and neat, it just it just does. Oh, I forgot to get my little strainer. Let me go grab my big strainer.
this is where I'm going to be putting the juices through. Okay. I'm not going to worry about this right now. This Because right now what I'm trying to do is get all the food and the veggies out of this salt broth. This smells so good. I wish we had smell of vision You would love it. It's got a beautiful color to it. Now, if you had added some onions and you put some onion skins in it, which are great. Next time you're making onions and you know you're going to make a batch, when you save your vegetable peelings, save some onion skins because the onion skins are what turn your broth kind of a brownie golden color. There's my bay leaf, one of the bay leaves that I used. Okay. I'm running out of room on this little pan, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to get nothing too overly big. Because it's only going to be for a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to continue to do this. And then I'm going to strain it so I'll bring you back. Let me just move this. i got one hand dirty, one hand clean. Okay, we're back. I'm straining the whole pan because those chickens were small. I didn't fill up the whole pan with water because I wanted some good flavor broth. And you see all the little goodiness right there? That's just going to go in the garbage. There's still a little bit of juice, but I'll grab that in a minute. So, due to lack of space. That's going in my kitchen. This is going to get moved out of the way so I have room to work with. You hear that? That's my jars that I've got myself prepped ready to <sighs> stir in this goodiness. There's some more of the leftover stuff. You know what? I'm going to get another bowl. I got too much of the food. That's going to get discarded. I'm going to make it easy on myself and just get another cookie sheet. So, this is all going to go in the fridge. See that bowl of broth? Okay, and I'm going to remove the meat from the chicken and throw everything else totally away. Save your bones because you can actually process all bones, chicken bones, beef bones, pork bones, twice and still get a lot of nutrient on the second batch. I wouldn't do more than two, but if you want to, you could prob probably could, but you know, never know. So I'm going to be saving all my bones, so we'll bring you back when I get to that phase because that's really a messy job. Okay, we are back. I was able to. Here is all the goodiness that's going to go in the garbage. We had gotten a rotisserie chicken while we were there at the Grope Meat Market. That was supper. Oops. But now I'm going to make the contained throwaway container double duty. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not going to close it yet. Don't forget, put all this juice back through the strainer and put it in your bowl because that's about a fourth of a cup of juice, which a lot of times makes a big difference in getting a full jar for you when you're processing. Also, don't forget your neck bones. Your neck bones, if you're lucky enough to get a neck bone, has a lot of good meat. And if you want to struggle with it, take it off. I don't. Unless it's the big part like this, oops, then I'll take the big chunks like that, but I don't mess with the rest of the stuff. Save this neck bone with the meat in with your, this is my jar, little cup of all the bones. Here's some more of the neck bone. Just run your finger 
to the side of it. Take off any little fat and gristle. I can't handle gristle. I just, I just can't. Once I bite into it, I'm done. <laughs> so I just take all that stuff off. Put that in the throwaway pile. And then if you have any of this meat that's left over on the neck, save it. This is going to go in a freezer bag for my next batch of broth cooking. Trying to get as much as I can in that cup before it falls over. And this is left over to strain to put back in my bowl that's in the refrigerator right now. And this is all the chicken. That's a lot of chicken. This is going to go in freezer bags because we had chicken last night, that rotisserie chicken last night from the one that we bought at the meat market with this whole 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 egg chickens so we're chicken out we're gonna wait and we'll probably have that chicken for one day next week so i'm gonna go ahead and put it in the freezer to keep it from uh spoiling and vacuum seal it to make it last a little bit longer because who knows when we'll get to it so anyway this is this portion we'll bring it back when we come to the next phase which is skimming the, the fat off the chicken broth and then put it in our jars and then put it in our canner for to be shelf stable. We'll bring you back to that phase. Okay, we are back. Now, try not to move this too much when you get it from the fridge. Because it will jiggle. And you see the fat that's on top there? Grab a spoon. A solid heavy spoon and a bowl to dump it into and gently scrape the top layers it'll all move over to one side and then dump it in your bowl see just like that so I'm going to do the whole thing don't forget the edges, because this is a standing steel bowl, depends on what kind of bowl you're using. The edges may have some fat on it also. Clean hands, clean tools. Because remember, this is food that you're serving your family or eating for yourself and you don't want to get sick. But see how the fat just builds up on the spoon? This batch didn't have a whole lot of fat, and you just never know how much fat's going to make. It's just part of processing. Okay, so I'm going to do this part, and then I'm going to ladle my jars, and then we'll bring you back. Because then I'll just go to the canner. Okay, on down to my last jar. But I wanted to show you, this is just what I do. Not everybody does this, but I like to do safe than sorry. There's all this residue. So I put it through a strainer again. And this is the last part of my broth. I like to keep a towel underneath it because I do spill. As y'all know, I'm a messy cook. <laughs> I'm getting better, but I'm still messy. And accidents happen, you just never know. Okay. That is not enough for another jar. But see all the residue that was left over? And this is my fat and everything, so. Oh, that's... Oh, that's going to go in the trash and then my dishes I'm going to put in the sink to wash by hand I didn't even use my ladle I, it was taking too long to use the ladle so I didn't, didn't want to get it didn't use it here's a towel just in case so that's all dirty dishes this is not enough to save for anything so I'm just going to stick it so whenever you don't have a full jar just put a regular lid on it label it Stick it in your fridge and then use it within the next three to five days. I would not wait no more than five days. If you are going to need not use it till longer than that, then label it, date it, 
and put the red lid and ring on it. Close it up tight. Stick it in your freezer. But if you do freezer, remember everything expands in the freezer. So only fill it to about right there because it's going to need room to expand. Otherwise, you're going to break your glass. Okay, so. Now let's get to wiping because this has got fat on it. And you have to remove all the fat in order for the seal to work in the processing. So you get a little container of vinegar. A brand new clean paper towel. Squeeze all the excess vinegar out of it. And see, here's my little container of vinegar. And I just use white distilled vinegar. Any vinegar you have will work. And then I just use, I just fold it in half just to save, save on space. And I like to fold it over again. And then you just wipe it. You wipe it on the side of the rim and the lip of the rim. I reuse my lids. A lot of people don't do it, but I put a little tick mark on there. A lot of my lids, especially the old ball lids that were made prior to 2000 when the pandemic hit, so of almost four years ago, those lids, I've actually I've used them, and they've sealed, and they've been sealed for over a year with no issues. I've only had two that did have an issue, and I don't know if it was me or what, but anyway, it happens even if they're brand new. These are from directly from ball, okay? So you just can't predict that it hap It just happens. So if you don't want to reuse your lids, then get brand new lids. I do have some boxes here. I've got like maybe 300 boxes of brand new lids of regular and wide mouth. So I'm good to go for several years. But in as long as I know that they're going to seal, I'm going to continue to use them. Once they don't seal, I put on there uh, no good. That means I can only use this for dry ingredients or for hand hand tightening things but I don't waste my lids until they get all rusty once they start to build up a little bit of rust anywhere on the lid I throw it away not good for nothing mess with it now it's always good if you want to recycle it and make a craft item out of it that'll be a good idea so I've got my lid got my ring fingertip tight and for me fingertip tight it's my middle finger and my thumb nothing else is being used However tight I get is however tight I get. Everybody's strength is different. So let's just do one more project. And I just noticed, I don't think you were, in, I was in frame. I'm just wiping the outside of the rim and on the top of the rim of the thing, but don't touch it. Now I know in the old school, the old way, Ball used to say you had to wash these and soak them in hot water. You don't have to do that anymore with the new lids and stuff, those lids. Now this one's not a ball lid. This is a harvest guard lid. And you can see the little tick mark. I've already used this once, but I'm going to use it again because I've done the same thing with these. And they seal perfectly fine. No issues, no problems. Fingertip tight. And it's good to go. So I'm going to continue to do all this, and I'll bring you back when we go put them into the canner, and that'll be the next phase, and then we'll go to the next process. Okay, all my jars are in the canner. If, remember, any kind of canning you're doing with any pressure canning. If you're working with cold product, you want cold water. If you're working with hot product, you want hot water. So turn your pot on, let it get hot, not boiling hot, but let it get hot. So when you put your jars in there, you don't shock them and break them. Now I had knife. I got nine jar, pine jars, so that made me let me double stack. And my particular canner is the All American canner room number nine twenty one, and this does let me allow me to double stack only on the pints. On the quarts, I could only do one row. They do have other machines that are bigger, but I'm I'm short. And I have trouble already getting onto this one. I tried the other one and it was just too tall. I couldn't do it. So, pour your excess vinegar into your water. That's going to help get all the, the white fuzzy stuff on the outside of the jars for processing out of the way. On my particular machine, let me grab me my stuff. I'm grabbing my weight. Mine is an All-American. It has a weight. The pesto ones are different. 
but it requires me to put Vaseline or petroleum jelly on the inside of my so keep in mind if you're if you're needing if you're working with hot items do this before you turn your uh, canner on because this is hot going to be hot if you do that afterwards but I knew I'd be working with coal so all I'm doing is greasing you don't want to lay it on really really thick but you want to make sure there's plenty of it on there okay so I'm just working myself sorry for the reach there in front of the camera I'm just doing the inside of the lip of the canner itself this is just fascinating that I have extra in a container oh this thing is heavy and then on the outside of because that's what's going to be touching the inside of the canner and this is what you want to grease every three to four times you use it so if you're doing like a long day of canning and you're going to be doing three or four sessions you should only have to be able to do this once for that day but you definitely need to do it again the following day, following time you process okay let me get a towel because I gotta wipe my hands Okay, wipe that oh, jelly oil off of my hands. My particular uh, canner, it's got the little notch right here. There's a notch, there's an arrow right here, and there's a notch. And there's got two little safety cap things here and here. I always start off a little bit further away, and then I turn it. Oops. Get back in there. There it is. Turn it. And what it does, it locks. Those little, the little latch locks underneath these little notches here. That tells you that it's locked. Okay? And you always start with one end and one opposite end. Then you turn the knob to secure the lid tight. The person that's going to unlock it is the person that needs to lock it. I learned that the hard way because Hubby did that a couple from the beginning with me. And then he went here when I need to unlock it. It's like, oh no, it's stuck. I finally got it, but it took me a dickens of a time because he's got he's got stronger arms than me. So tie all the next the next set of two. You want to tie it, but don't kill it. But you do want it tight. Sometimes you have to loosen it for it to go all the way in. Oh, it's the wrong way. Because it needs to go all the way in so it lands inside the groove. So right in here and it goes all the way in. See that? And okay. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong way. I always have trouble with the one in the back. Okay, there it is. I'm just gonna snug it in, snug it in. My little timer is on zero. When the heat comes on, this is gonna go up. And for my tech temperature, my uh, zone here in South Texas is 200. So I always want to be under 200. So it's 10 pounds of pressure is where I always want to be. But I gotta get up there first and then turn down my heat. So always make sure that your canner. It's level. Don't put it on one side over the, the other because the wider the food could cause this to spill and tip and you're going to have the biggest mess ever and probably dangerous because this, this is going to be so burning hot you could be actually burning and damaging your property much less the canner itself. These babies are not cheap. Okay, so I'm going to turn my burner on. Oh, that's weird. Sorry, I need the front. I'm not going to go instantly to high. I never go instantly to high when it's a cold item because I want it to warm up and let it, all my jars warm up also because I don't want to shock them. 
So I'm starting mine at the middle of my burner, which for me is a six. Set my timer for for 30, 20, I would say 30, 35 minutes. Then when my timer goes off, I put it on high and then I wait until my little dog gets to 10 pounds of pressure. Once it goes to 10 pounds of pressure, I turn my heat down so this always stays the entire processing time and the pounds of pressure that I need. And for pint jars for a broth, watch your recipes because every type of food varies on the time. Pints are 20, quarts are 25 minutes because they're bigger. Okay, so always double check your recipe when you're doing this part. So here, now I'm going to set myself a timer for 30 minutes. I'm going to come back turn it up to high and then double check it to make sure when it comes to 10 on my, my particular machine when I put my weight on put it on my it's got a numbers on here 5 10 and 15 and I'm at 10 so this is the one that I would put on here it's gonna you're gonna see some steam coming out okay once it has a solid stream of steam solid set your timer for 10 minutes once it's been a solid steam, don't mess with your burner, leave it exactly where it is. Set for a solid 10 minutes. Set the timer, then when it goes off after 10 minutes, then you add your weight. Okay, that's when you start your processing time. Like, and this will be 20 minutes. Okay, so we'll come back to that face when we get to that face. Okay, I will be putting some links in my other canning videos. I've done this before, more detail. But I just want to give everybody, because not everybody goes back into the old ones. I know I don't go back to the old videos for people. So anyway, we're bringing it back. Okay, uh, my, drug, my little weight is jiggling. Okay, what's this? I've got some steady jiggle, which is what you could hear it. Listen to that. Then, I turn down my heat, because look at my temperature. It's past the 10. See that? Past the 10? Oops, I'm looking to see if you can see it. Yeah. Okay. So now, I'm going to turn down my heat to my sweet spot. It'll probably take you three or four sessions before you know your sweet spot on your stove. And then you just walk away and leave it alone because you can do that. But until then, so I continue to make sure you can hear the jiggle. Once it comes down to pressure, which is minus 10 pounds of pressure, it's going to stop jiggling. And then every few minutes, it's going to jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. So it's going to stop. See? It stopped jiggling. It starts again. It starts again. It's going to continue to do that. This is now the time when you set your processing time. So time for 20, 20 minutes. Set my timer for 20 minutes, and then we'll be almost done. All right. Okay, we are back. Final stage. I went ahead and took the rings off. Got a wet selfie towel. Wiped all my jars down. And look, this lid's been used twice. This lid's been used twice that I have. Most a lot, a lot of my jars and my rings and lids were donated to me from friends. This one's old as a cur jar, and that I've used it twice, and it's still working good. In fact, the taste a test you do is you pick up the jar just from the lid only, and if it doesn't fall off, that means it's a good seal. Plus, it's down. And the reason you want to take your rings off is because while they're sitting on your shelf, if the seal were to, because a month from now, three weeks from now, a year from now, the seal could, for whatever reason, come undone, and that food in there is spoiled. So that helps you do on there. That's why it's so, that almost everybody, and I'm almost pretty sure that the National Home of Preservation also recommends that you take the rings off before before you put them on your shelves for storage okay some people do rings some people don't it's a personal choice your home your kitchen you do it your way you do your own research I Rosa prefer to take my rings off ever so often I'll have a ring on one and it's because I forgot to take it off it's no, no other reason other than that and a lot of times I see it as like eh, I don't ain't gonna deal with it but I do know no matter what you're doing rings are real rings always 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 as soon as it pops if you hear the pss, that's a good seal. Always, even if that's a good seal, still double check. Do the first thing is do the smell test. Second thing, you do your you use your eyeballs. 
look to see if there's any fuzzies or mildew or fungus growing. If there is, toss the whole food inside. If it's possible, if you have a dishwasher, run it through the dishwasher. Don't hand wash it. But if you don't, you can always hand wash it, but make sure you do it with scalding hot water. I like to get my a pot of water boiling. I mean, boiling, boiling, boiling. Put it in my sink. Put hot water through this thing. Let it sit there for a good five to ten minutes. Then brush it down and wash it with, an, I like to use an SOS pad. Uh, use a bottle brush. Use a hand towel. Whatever it is that you have. And scrub it with soap and hot water. And make sure that you look good to the light. And make sure you don't see any yucky stuff inside of the glass. Because sometimes a lot of this food, when it comes to food like meat and cheese, stuff like that, could adhere, the fat and the grease, could adhere to the glass itself on the inside. Okay? So if you've done all that, you're good to go. So these are going to go in my canning shelf in my canning room. And we'll be good to go for broth two, four, six, eight. I got nine, jar nine pine jars. That's nine meals for us. Take care. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.